Tell us who you are first. Tell us who you are and what you do. If you don't, if it's okay. If you if you don't want to, it's okay too. No, no, I, I don't mind. I, I invest in real estate and I fly planes on the side. Most people want want it the other way around, but I actually I'm totally into the real estate and have been for a long time. Um, but I fund it with my hobby, which is to fly planes, and uh, I've been doing that for oh, I don't know a long time, thirty five years. But uh, the the real estate grabbed me when I was a kid. Um, my father kind of hooked me on it, and um, he didn't teach me a lot. But I, I observed a fair bit, and then it kind of just you know it's like it just sticks with you. I think all of us we just kind of we just like real estate. I don't know why. Has was, it been good to you? As it can go, uh, so you fly, fly, you're a pilot as a career and you do real estate as your, uh, what do they call that word? Uh, your side thing, your, your side business or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of like hustle. It's hustle. Thank you. Yeah. Hustle. Yeah. It's kind of side hustle. Around. But um, yeah, it's both. It's both. It's both. You know, I, I'm always, I'm always in my head. I'm flying cause I've got to keep my skill set up and, um, yeah, I fly regularly, um, but when I'm flying, I'm you know talking. We're talking real estate as well, so it's kind of blurry anyway. And 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 I go to places around wherever, and I'm always looking at the real estate. Like I know I know Newport and Long Beach really really well because when I get to port, we have um, bicycles everywhere. Um, part of our air crew club, so I can. Uh, just go to the hotel lobby and and um, ask to pull out a push bike and I'll go riding for you know three four five hours and I go up and down all the streets looking at all the real estate so um, it's kind of they're both my my job's kind of the same um, yeah but I I got to say I love I love Southern California I really enjoy it there it's one of my favorite places you're in the dark you're in the bat cave oh now you're out can I can I just interject yeah. something here. I'm a runner, okay, and when my when I travel or I go anywhere, or even in my own neighborhood in Southern California here, I go running, and what and what I'll I can't tell you how many times I've seen for rent or for sale signs or open houses and things like that. Sometimes the simplest thing, just cruise, taking a walk around your neighborhood, um, you know, going out a little bit, you'll you might find deals. What do they call that? Yeah. Driving for dollars, walking for dollars. Um, it's, it's something you might want to do once in a while and get some good exercise at the same time. But it's not, it's just nice to be in, in the environment, in the, I, I like real estate, not just for the dollars. I just enjoy the real estate. It's beautiful real estate. You know, some of the homes are beautiful and, uh, it's just, um, you're in the community as well and you're kind of just part of it. I, um, I like being uh, outside and on the bike, I feel like I'm kind of like, like jogging, Claude, you just feel like you're more part of it then. Um, you can hear it and you can see it and you can smell it and you can feel it. So people say hello, you know, you can stop and have a talk to them. Um, uh, Naples, little, no, there's a little, there's a uh, canal precinct around Long Beach and you can walk around the edge of the water and you're in between, you're, the pathway takes you between the water and the property. And in, in summer, it's magnificent and uh, because everyone's out and there are people on boats and people, kids are jumping off the bridges, you know, they're not supposed to, all the signs say no jumping, but all the kids are jumping off and people are on their paddle boards. And, and I, I talked to the people who were sitting on their balconies and I congratulate them on where they were living and that starts the conversation. What? And, um, What's the best? Was, uh, what's the best? What's an average house go for in Australia? What's a nice, middle, decent neighborhood, uh, three bedroom, two bath house go for in Australia? Just to give us a little perspective. In Australia, um, in Sydney, the median price is well over a million dollars now. So, it, wow, every, starting home, wow, yeah. wow, median price. We we live and breathe real estate in Australia. We, it's part of our fabric. It's part of our, uh, social standing. Um, you either, you own or you don't. Um, it's, it's a big topic at the moment. We, we just had a big debate on television, uh, national TV uh, and all the politicians came on and they were all arguing about, why housing is unaffordable and why some people have got lots of houses and other people live in their cars. And it's a big, 
it's a big deal. But because um, the money I, I have a question. Uh, you, I've watched all the Crocodile Dundee movies. You guys got like 2,000 square miles of, of dingoes and, and desert. I mean, it, why, why you've got all this land there. I mean, it's... Yeah, but, but it's only the coastal area that really is livable. It's um, it's pretty desolate. It's more like Africa than America. Amer Australia and America and the US are very similar in culture and people and what we do. But topographically, we're more like Africa. You know, it's pretty arid. It's pretty it's pretty dry. I've seen most of it from the air, and it's you know there's not not a lot of places you can live in it. It's all around the coast. So on that basis, we're pretty limited. It's not not like the US where you can just go into the middle of the US and there's farmland. We we just don't have that. We just don't have that. So um yeah, and we all I don't know, there are only twenty million of us as well, you know, wow. or 25, 25 million. God, we get we have that we have that in San Diego, I think. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, right? but but half of them yeah. but half are undocumented. Oh shit, you made an opinion. Oh no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Corey, Corey likes that. <laughs> what's your best? What's your, what's your, uh, Michael, what's your, what's the best deal you ever did? Oh man, it's, it's, uh, it's, it was actually a string of deals. I was going through it with my kids the other day because they're, they're 18, 19 now. They're starting to understand a little bit where they're coming out of school and we're building a career. And I suggested they get into the real estate investment and then get a job to fund it, a bit like I do. So I was taught, explaining return on investment. And um, the thing, the best deal probably was the one that started all off, was my first property. And it was the one I was I was expecting to live in forever. And um, I didn't put any money into that. I went and got a personal loan. And so from that, I then invested additional funds it was actually a partnership came out of that and i went half share in two others and then that partner went bankrupt and i had to manage that through the 2008 uh, financial crisis so i bought him out i, I maintained the, the payments and i slowly bought him out over time and then i had him sign a couple of options agreements to give me the ability to buy him out option agreements uh, you said a magic word there i love options. yeah you see you guys it just rolls off the tongue for you guys but in australia it's not that common uh very few of us have, have that level of sophistication but i had been i'd been taught by claude years and years ago mm -hmm. he doesn't know he doesn't know that i well, i can't I've come i'm back. only i'm only 36 it couldn't have been that far back all right well, how many years ago? But it was oh, like... I lie about my age a lot, though. So, <laughs> so, can, so you give I... us, can you share any numbers? Can you share any round numbers? Basically, uh, just to give us an idea of uh, the 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 most profitable deal you ever did. The deal that the deal that the bragging deal. Uh, oh well, my 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 official return on the investment is infinity because. I never put any money in my first deal and that deal has funded every other deal. So okay. that's my bragging, right? Um, you know, I like when you that. never, when you never put money in your infinity, that's like, that's something I heard years ago. And mm -hmm. I thought about it the other day and I explained it to my boys and uh, it's kind of like, it's a bit odd really to, to say that, but that's the reality of it. Cause I never, I've never put money in any deal and I just kept rolling them out. And then I bought, so I, I held real estate for 20 years, but um, this particular house and these, the half share, I went through the, the 2008 crisis with these, um, the house and the two shares and then went through and it took, took, six years for us to come back to value uh, where we went weren't underwater on value anymore and that's when i exercised the option and i bought my partner out and i i said to my wife oh, i think uh, what do you want to i asked her what do you want to do do you want to do you want to sell everything and just pay off the family home because we'd seen the bankruptcy we've seen the gfc i'd seen my father go broke i've lost my job before 
by you know my, my company went broke and she said yeah let's just sell that sell everything and, and and we'll pay off the family house but then i got some information and i realized where we were in the timing so that's when i said okay we're not doing that now we got good timing information and i went and bought six houses like immediately like i bought i bought five all at once and then an extra one after that and what and what did you do with those houses did you rent them did you fix them up did you sell, resell I, them you did you no, keep them i i so it was a capital growth play uh we we live in we we have what's called negative gearing which is negative cash flow for you guys so because i've had a, a job with with good cash flow that would support my portfolio and the portfolio was to to be held for a capital appreciation so but also, I didn't actually buy it for that. I bought it for my kids because I knew they were going to go up in value. They wouldn't be able to afford the houses later on. So I, I kind of had the the view that I would, um, I would squat on the mortgages for the boys until it became time that they would be able to take those mortgages over. But the mortgages would be by then half or a third of the price of what the real estate was worth. And then I would just hand the mortgage over and we would have a, a you know, like a kind of a family business. Um, it's turned out a little differently, but that's kind of what happened because uh, I did that in 2016. And then when, when I bought, I knew we were going to have a slowdown in 2019, 2020. So I got ready for that. And then when that happened, I lost my job and... But like we all know, then they pumped so much money in the system, it all went into real estate. It did in Australia. And our property price had doubled and tripled in value. So my return on investment was like 5x so, on, just on that little bit, you know. Sure. So you started, so, you started in real estate at what, uh, at what age, would you say? Eight. I was, uh, I was 30. 30. If 30. you had, if you could do it all over again and go back in the De De DeLorean, the back to the future machine, would you, would you do it much? Would, would you start much younger than, t than 30? If, I, you knew, I've, if you knew what you knew today. So the first investment property, that half share I bought, I was in the house with my wife and our second born, who was probably about one year old. And, and I've got a picture of, my wife's standing in the kitchen there where we're discussing cleaning and fixing the house up and he's asleep on her foot. And I had always said at the very start that that house was for that, for that child, for that boy. So would I, I in the womb, in the womb, baby. <laughs> That's where I'd start. Absolutely. Hey, um, can anybody have any qu um, questions for Michael here? Um, just uh, unmute yourself and just jump right in here. You got a real investor here. Talk, ask questions. I can keep going if you want, Claude. Um, well, I want to. Uh, well, I want to uh, go into um, role play also. But uh, how about another two, three minutes, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna go into uh, role play Monday. I, I, I just finished because it, it got got interesting in the end because the purpose of the portfolio changed a bit. I couldn't stop buying. I, I just kept going and uh, I had this habit because I love my real estate. And, and eventually it, I said, so I bought all these houses and I held them. It was all good. We didn't do anything. I, I learned, I, I thought I was going to be developing the real estate. I thought I'd, I'd renovate. I thought I'd add things and, and just, you know, I don't know, all sorts of ideas in my head, but, um, I didn't need to in the end. I'm glad I didn't do anything. I just left my tenants in there and I actually made them useful. I wanted to, I wanted the real estate to be useful. Um, not just something that sat there and the boys are too young. They couldn't move in. So I bought a house to live in. So I, I, you'll get a, you guys will get a kick out of this. I was, so I, I got into derivatives trading years ago in the stock market, like hardcore heavy duty, you know, tell, tell everybody what derivatives training is. Oh, trading, you know, like um, puts and calls. Okay. It's risky stuff, right? No, not risky no? stuff. No, that's the whole, no, everyone thinks that, but you, you use, I do. You use options <laughs> and the, that you, together. You make them do what they're supposed to do. Um, that's how you play. You play a protected buy right. You buy a share and you buy a put for insurance and then you write calls for income. And then you got to, that's how you should play the stock market. Anyway, complicated stuff. So I'm in Pasadena 
and I'm on an overnight and um, on a slip and uh, and downstairs in the hotel, this guy's selling a real estate course. And I thought, oh, I'll go down and have a listen to him. He's a you know, $1,000 course, how to make a million bucks in real estate. So I go down and have a listen to him and I'm listening to him and he's got his whole show on and he's, um, you know, he's about 60 or so. So he's been around and can tell he's, he knows what he's talking about. He's not just selling rubbish and he explains everything. I, I understand what he's saying. And he, at the very end, he said, you know, but here's the problem. 90% of you, even if you buy this course, 90% of you won't do it. Even though it makes you money, you won't do it. He said, here's my advice for all you guys. You got buy a house to live in and buy a house to sell in retirement. Yeah. And I heard that. And I thought, I can do that because I'd been the trader, right? And I was shit at trading. I didn't have the psychology for it. So I, I gave that up. But, but this is buying a house to live in and buy a house to sell in retirement. Easy. So I did that. And, and initially, it was just a half share. And then eventually someone, my partner came in and goes, hey, I put my hand up at auction. I've got this auction. Do you want to go again? And he needed me. He had to have me in. So I said, yeah, let's do that. And that's when I started going, okay, if I buy a house to live in, buy a house to sell in retirement, buy one each for the boys, buy one for a medical fund um, to fit, to help for our Inter health when we're interesting. 70. Interesting. And one for, our, one for business. But, then someone poked me in the chest said, what do you keep doing this? And after COVID, we made all, all the profit. We, I took all that and I know what the timing is because we're coming up to another 2008 in a couple of years. I've now liquidated everything. I'm, I'm going, I put everything into one property now and now I'm just going to sit and wait. And, right. um, and we'll, so that's, that's the kind of the story. Hey, very good. Well, thank you so much for getting up at two o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. Can you imagine he's in the future? We're on Monday. We're Monday morning here and we're talking to Tuesday. We're actually talking to the future. Isn't that amazing? How does that work? Me? Are you going to be able to see the eclipse uh, from Australia really well? Is uh, that we're getting a, a lunar, a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse this week? I think it's lunar. Lunar. Yeah. We're I, I'm not sure. My wife's on to that, actually. Um, usually any, we'll see if we can find it and see it, yeah. Okay. Any, any, any sports scores or stock tips you can give us in, from the future? <laughs> Funny you got, yes, I can. <laughs> yes, he can. Hey, Michael, what, what are the interest rates over there? They're currently, uh, it varies a bit. The official rate's at four and a half. We're paying like sevens, eights, and nines, depending on what sort of deal you can get. Yeah. Yeah. But funny funny you should say that because you, you, we to, Paul was talking about um, me being in the future. And uh, I don't know if you guys picked up, but I, in 2016, I got ready for 2019, 2020. And that should, that should be a bit – that should – I should probably explain that a bit. Well, you want me to... well, we we really um, I want to go to the other stuff right now, Michael. If people want to contact you and talk more about Australia real estate and some of your ideas about uh, projecting the future uh, things that'll happen, um, would you, um, you could you put your contact information in the chat box there? Is that not is it on my video? I'm sorry, it's so dark. Yeah, it is. Yes. What's up? Oh, yeah, what's up? Yeah, you got your his WhatsApp is right there. Six one uh read it off uh, for everybody if they want to get hold of you. It's plus six one four three three one four eight zero seven one. I can't and see it. Just, it's a it's so I mean WhatsApp. If you got everyone familiar with WhatsApp as an app? Yep. Yeah. It's it very it's it's very handy. Michael, yeah, turn, really Michael turned me on to it. Michael, thank you so much. Sure. Welcome. Thank you so much. You're going to hang out or go to back to bed? No, no, I'll hang out. All oh, right, right. I like a lot of the things you said. I did my first real estate deal. I think I was 25, 26 years old. I bought a little, uh, I bought a foreclosed property uh, condo that was taken back by the bank uh, in Stanhope, New Jersey for $25,000. I think I put down twenty five hundred, some three thousand dollars, and a little bit of closing costs. That property eventually went up to uh, 
140. I refinanced that property. I bought another one. Uh, I ended up selling both of those properties and moving to California with a little nest egg. And kind of what Michael was talking about, can you start any good property in a good neighborhood with the right financing or terms, you know, just common sense where people commute, where it's it's near areas where people work and go to school and things. I always like a uh, real estate near where people, uh, tra transportation, things like that. That property on a long-term basis will always go up. There are exceptions, but the majority of properties, uh, I, I've never lost money on a property that I bought with that formulation. Okay. And if you, you don't, and a lot of people say, gee, Claude, you know, the deposit, the credit uh, credit rating and everything else like that. If you can't do it that way, then you do it creatively. That's the next step 